Hello everyone, welcome back to our video class here at CSEC Math Tutor. In this lesson, we are focused on statistics and central tendencies from raw data. So our objectives are here to calculate mean, mode, and median. We're also going to describe them and see how much we can use them in different situations. So first up, we're going to talk about um, quickly what data is and what our terms are. So first of all, data is randomly observable facts that are recordable. Uh, it can be qualitative, it can be quantitative, such as your name, your age, your weight, your favorite things, colors, styles, all of those, everything is data. And data can be qualitative, as in the quality of something. Um, so you can talk about um, your likes and how much you like. Or it can be quantity, in which case you can count it. So your age, for example, um, is quantitative, whereas your the things that you like are qualitative. And if you if you look at quantitative data, then quantitative data can be broken down into discrete or continuous data. This is actually important. Um, so discrete data can only take whole number values, and Continuous data can take whole number and fractional values. So if you're looking at data that can only be whole numbers, such as the number of persons in a room, then that has to be discrete because it can only be a whole number. But if you're looking at the, the size of your foot, then your foot size can be continuous. So you can wear one and a half, two and a half, three, four, etc. Now, mean, mode, and median are what we call central tendencies. And central tendencies meaning that they are towards the middle or they tend to define um, a group, a, a, a set of numbers in terms of giving you an idea of how a set of numbers is. So the mean is where we add up all the numbers and divide by the number of numbers. We call it the arithmetic average. The median is the middle number. And to find that number, you need to put your numbers in order first, your data in order, and then you find the middle number. And the mode, the mode is just the most popular data type that appears in your in the data that you're working with. All right, the range gives us an idea of how the how the data is spread. So the range is not a, a central tendency, but it tells us how far apart the data is from the lowest to the highest, and we find that value by subtracting the highest value, the lowest value from the highest value. So, um, which average is better depending on what you're doing? Um, each has advantages, each has disadvantages, and as we go through the questions, you will get an idea of what we mean by um, which average is better. Generally, depends on the situation that you're working with. All right, so let's look at some questions now and um, get an idea of what we mean when we, um, when, when we try to work with the averages. So first up, we have a survey of 10 households. The number of children was found to be um, 415, going through these, and 4372341. These are the number of children. And the first thing we want to do is to put these numbers in order, and especially since we're going to be looking at the median. So let's put these numbers in order first, starting with the lowest one, one. And there's another one, and there is a two. There are some threes in there. There are two of them. So three and three. And there are some fours as well. There are two fours. Actually, there are three fours. One, two, three. And then there is a five and a seven. So once we have organized our numbers, we can start answering our questions. And the first question is to state the mode. So the mode is that number that appears the most. And in this case, we see that um, four is the number that appears the most. So our, our mode there is four. So we can just write that down. The number that appears the most, it's the most popular. That's our mode. The mean number of children, we want to find that two. The mean is the arithmetic average, which means that we're going to count up all the numbers, add them up and divide by the number of numbers. So there are 10 households. So we're gonna add up all these numbers. And in adding up these numbers, 
and just writing it out here, the mean is, is given as the sum of the numbers divided by the number of numbers. Adding up these numbers gives us 34, and there are 10 households. So we end up with 3.4. And now the median um, number, the median number is the middle number. And of course, you must put your numbers in order to find the middle number. We have already done so. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Those are the 10 numbers that are represented in the, in the box here. And we want to find which number is in the middle. Now, we want five on each side. So one, two, three, four, five, which means that there's no number in the middle. And in a situation like this, where there's no number in the middle, what we do is that we add the two numbers closest to the middle on either side. So we end up with three plus four divided by two. And we end up with 3.5. So our median here is equal to 3.5. Now remember that we're talking about children, number of children per household. So this data is saying that the modal number of children per household is four. The mean number of children per household is 3.4. And the median number of children per household is 3.5. Now, the question continues by saying a researcher says that the mode seems to be the best average to represent the data in the survey, give one reason to support this, this statement. Um, the issue is here we are dealing with discrete data. And discrete data, remember, can only take whole number values. So if you're talking about children, um, to say three and a half children, it doesn't sound um, doesn't sound right when you're talking about children because you can't have a half of a child. Um, of course, it, it would work in some situations, but generally when you're saying 0.5 of a child or 0.4 of a child, you can't have a fraction of a child. So the researcher's argument that the mode seems to be the best one um, has merit in that because you're using discrete data, it makes sense to use the number that is whole and so that is one reason um, why we could choose the the mode as um as, as the best average for this kind of data let's look at another one here we have eight people working in an office and they are paid hourly rates as follows 12 15 15 14 13 14 13 and 13 dollars per hour and we are to find for this data the mean, the median, and the mode. Now, first, again, we're going to put them in order. So I'm going to put them in order right here. 12, that's the lowest one. The other numbers are 13. There are three 13s. So 13, 13, 13. And there are two 14s. And there, there are two 15s as well. Uh, importantly, when you're setting up your data, you must remember to count them. One, two, it's eight people. So make sure that you have your eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Sometimes you can write them down and miss one or write an extra one. So make sure that you count them to make sure that you have the, the amount that is said. All right. To find our mean now, we are going to add up all of these numbers. So in adding up these numbers for the mean, We end up with adding 12 plus 13 plus 13 plus 14 plus 14 plus 15 plus 15. We end up with 109. And that divided by 8 gives us 13.625, um, which we're going to round off since we're dealing with dollars and cents as 13.63, which means $13.63. The median is your middle number. So 1, 2, 3, 4. Which number is in the middle? One, two, three, four. Four on this side, four on that side. There's no number in the middle. So again, we're going to say that our median is the mean of these two. So we have 13 plus 14 divided by two, and that gives us 13.5. So the median 
is um, $13.50. And then the mode, so this is part one, part two, and part three. The mode is the most popular data type. So the most popular data type is 13. There are three of them. So the mode is 13 and $13 at that. So we have our three averages, the mean, the mode, the median, constructed from raw data. And now we're going to answer the second part of the question that says, um, which average would you use if you wanted to claim that the staff were well paid? Well, if you wanted to claim that the staff was well paid, you will naturally want to use the highest highest average and the highest average here is the mean which says that they're getting $13.63 um, per hour of course um, there are persons in there that don't for example this person gets um, $12 so one two three four there are four persons who are not getting that but the the mean is affected by extreme values that is when you drop one big number in there, it changes everything, or one small number, it changes everything. So if you wanted to claim that they were well paid, you would use the use the, the mean in this case because the mean is the highest. If you wanted, of course, to claim that they were badly paid, then of course you want to use the lowest average. And the lowest average here would be the mode. Because with the mode, they get um $13 an hour. Whereas with the mean, they get $13.63. So be aware, statistics can be used to do different issue, do different things. Um, persons will use numbers to make their case. Persons will use numbers to try to mislead you for, um, from time to time to let you believe whatever they want you to believe by quoting the numbers that suit them. And so in, in st statistics is just one of those um, areas of mathematics that allows persons to convince other persons to their way of thinking based on how they interpret the numbers that they see. So there are three averages. So if somebody says the average is, you may want to ask them what average because there are three and they're calculated differently and they may not represent, in your view, the total picture. None of them represents the total picture of what is going on up here. One says $13.63, one says $13.50, one says 13 and that is not exactly the whole picture of what is going on here. But these are what we call the central tendencies, the mean, the mode, and the median. Let's look at our final question. And here we have two people working in a factory making car parts. The table shows the complete parts they make in one week. So we have Randy, we have John, and we have the number of parts that they make per week. Now, find the mean and the range for Randy and John, let's talk about the range first. Range is the difference between the lowest and the highest value. So the range, um, the range for Randy would be the highest number, which is 22, minus the lowest number, which is 20. So Randy has a range of two. Whereas John, his highest number is 36 and his lowest number is 12. So we have a range of um, 24. Now the, the range gives us an idea of the spread and the idea is the smaller the number, the smaller the spread, which would mean more consistency. And the larger the number the larger the, the, the range it means the farther apart the numbers are which leads to the conclusion of inconsistency all right now we have found the ranges for the for both men now we need to look at the mean for both men so let's look at the mean to look at the mean what we're going to do is add up the numbers for randy and in, and in adding up these numbers, we end up with um, 104, the mean for, let's write them down, for um, Randy. Gives us 104. 
of course he works five days a week and that gives us 20.8 20.8 parts per week and for john once you add up these numbers 30 plus 15 plus 12 plus, plus 36 plus 28 you end up with um 121 divided by 5 and that gives us 24 Point two parts per week. So we are going to use these numbers to discuss some issues dealing with the two workers. And the first one is, who is more consistent? Um, looking at the numbers, you can see that Randy is obviously the most, um, the more consistent of the two. And if you didn't know Randy's numbers and you saw his range then his range would tell you that he's more consistent because his um, range is small and a small range means consistency. Numbers are close to each other. So Randy is more consistent as compared to, to, to John. Um, who makes the most parts though? Definitely. Um, John makes the most parts. He has a higher average and he has a higher number of parts, 121 compared to 104. So this is definitely a win for John. And the last question though, who is the better worker? This is a very, very tricky question and subjective as to why you would want to consider one better than the other one. So who is the better worker? Um, we could say Randy is better because he's more consistent. And you could say John is better because he makes more parts, depending on, on which, which definition of better you are using. Um, better is a subjective word. So in that case, you would have to state your point and, and back it up by what you, by what you um, intend to say. So if you, if you decide that Randy is better, then you're going to talk about Randy's consistency day after day coming in, producing the same, same or similar number of parts. Or if you can talk about John, who is better, because he produces more at the end of the week than, than, than Randy. Um, this is how you can use the mean, the mode, and the median. This is how you calculate them. And this is how you can apply them to real life situations or some real life situations. Remember, for more past and practice papers, you can go to csecmathewitcher.com, go into the past paper section or the, or, the, or the practice paper section and find more questions that you can use to build your build yourself up to build your knowledge base and to get more practice as you prepare for your exams good luck and keep working hard <laughs>